So I'm the artist in resident at the Keck School of Medicine, and I produce a series of gallery shows for them each year that are tied to the core curriculum of the medical school. So if, let's say, you, if you had um, emphysema, I could stick and you were doing work about it. It, it wouldn't be work. It wouldn't be like, oh, I'm doing landscapes, but I, but I have cystic fibrosis. It would be, I'm doing work about having cystic fibrosis or emphysema. Um, I could give you a show, and then you would talk to the medical students about your life experience, how that helps you in your creative process. And how has your background sort of inspired your perspective on art? I was born with a genetic illness. So for years, I did artwork about the fact that I was sick and I drew these contorted skeletons. I drew people in pain. I drew people who were angry about life in general. And then at a certain point, uh, thanks to taxpayer dollars, uh, the National Institute of Health came up with a treatment for what I had. And as a result, uh, I now am uh, healthy. I'm, I always say I'm the healthiest sick person in the entire world. And that caused sort of a sea change in, in my artwork. I stopped doing work about being sick. I started doing work about other people and their stories. And then also my paintings went from being very focused on my situation to uh, doing artwork about other people's situations. And as a way to keep doing work about illness, I started doing monoprints of people's scars. And that happened because I met a woman who was in a wheelchair, using a wheelchair, I guess is the proper term. And she sort of got on my case and she kept saying, just because you're healthy now, doesn't mean all this medical stuff is not part of your process. So I went home that night, I thought about what she said, and I, and I thought, well, I'm real, first of all, you get tired of talking about yourself when you have an illness, you know, you get tired of doing work about yourself. So I just thought, well, maybe, maybe I could do work about other people. And here was this lovely person who uh, showed up you know, at the gallery one night and I called her up and said, could I do a print of your back? I thought, well, maybe if I have nothing to say about me, I will say something about you. And the first time I showed that work, people kept coming up to me and it was sort of amazing. They would walk up to me in the gallery and they would undo a shirt or pull up a skirt or pull down pants. And everybody wanted to tell me not only uh, what happened to them, how, what it was like to go through, you know, the healing process, how much strength they needed, and usually how they appreciated life more because they had made it through this transition. People just kept coming up to me and started telling me stories and started crying. And I was just thinking like, well, this has never happened with one of my paintings. People like them, they relate to them, but there was something so immediate about a contact print of people's scars because it's the actual size of the scar. It's the, you know, what I wanted was people to know the geographic location of the scar, um, see this beautiful print that when you look at it, doesn't look threatening or damaging. And, but mostly I wanted them to read the story of the person's survival, how they felt that that scar, that situation changed their life. That in turn uh, led to me hearing hundreds of stories from people about their medical care and about things that were done right and things that were done wrong and doctors that knew what they were doing as far as bedside manner and doctors that weren't. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I approached UCLA about coming in and using all this artwork uh, as a way of teaching the doctors a better bedside manner. So originally I went to UCLA and they said I could do this, but they weren't sure, so they weren't gonna pay me. But I wanted to try it anyway. I just thought mm -hmm. if this is a big 
a big project. So I did that for a couple of years and then I got poached away by USC where now this whole idea of medical humanities, we've really grown it to gallery shows, work with researchers, uh, a lecture series where I'm on stage and I moderate talks between doctors and patients. That's sort of this process. It started out doing TED-centric work because that's what you do when you're sick, to doing work about other people, to becoming this disruptor in medical education. And they're all things that I never really planned because my plan was to die at 30 and and then I didn't die. So I had to figure out something to do with all my time. Yeah, it was a major shift then. Yeah. Um, how, how did the uh, audience react to the program? Did, did it fit your expectations or was there some surprising aspect? Well, there's two things there's we we have sort of have two audiences we have we have the med students and they seem to really enjoy it i'm constantly being told by them that it gives them a new outlook uh of their patients and then the other uh person people are the the current doctors the medical specialists that we put on stage and i am always amazed at their insight into the artwork that the patients do I really stress with every presentation that the artwork that I show, had all these people been healthy, none of this artwork would have ever been created. My SCAR project, if I'd been healthy, it would have never happened. So there's a lot of creativity. There's a lot of mental development that people with illnesses have because of their illness. And so I, I am trying to show the doctors, these people have something because of their illness other than their illness and don't take that for granted. What sort of lens do you bring to curation then? Are you finding the artists and helping them form a new show for the gallery or or you know sort of what is your role that you're you're bringing to it? It depends. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of artists who do work about their illness and they have it at home and no one might ever see it because galleries don't, you know, no, you can't walk in a gallery and say, I've got colon cancer and here's a painting about it. Nobody is going to buy that painting. There are a lot of artists out there who have work built up that just do not have wall space to show it publicly. So I get to give them, that's one of the big joys is I get to give people wall space for shows that they would never, ever get to show before. So it's more a matter of of finding these people and then putting them in the slot that they fit in the medical school curriculum. Uh, maybe shifting to your own personal work too, uh, in your photography and I guess a lot of your pieces, there's a lot of movement in them uh, and a lot of, you know, just expression of the body. Would you be able yeah. to describe sort of your, maybe the message that you're trying to translate here? Sure. Well, again, there's the before and after. Mm -hmm. So my earlier work was single figures, uh, sort of mostly I showed bones because I my illness was a bone disease. They were very isolated. They were, I used the edge of the canvas to sort of trap the figures because I felt very trapped. I had this death sentence. Um, the medical care I was receiving is godly expensive. Even the medicine I take now, it's a quarter million dollars a year, you know. So there's there's a lot of pressure about being sick and the cost of being sick and the isolation of being sick. So that is my early work. There's only one figure in and it's about me. So then when this new medicine came up and I had some joints replaced and all of a sudden I was healthy, I started doing work with multiple figures and people, they were much more sensual. They were nudes of people intertwined or having sex. And um, so that was a, a long period. I did work like that after I was healthy. And now I do this work that's sort of very Chagall, like there's people floating and there's animals and really bright colors. Whereas the early work was very dark. It, it had color, but it was almost monochromatic. So my 
palette has shifted, my colors are brighter, my subject matter has changed. It's, you can really line up all my paintings chronologically and go, that's where he had a hip replacement. That's where he started enzyme replacement. That's where, you know, you can, as my health change, you can see a drastic change in my artwork almost immediately. And it's not something, it's just like these other people that I show. You don't sit there consciously and think, I'm healthier now, I'm going to do brighter paintings. It just turns out that way. It's naturally sort of evolving. Yeah. Um, if somebody was to come to your art show and it was their first ever art show, how would you describe what it is that you're doing? And you could take this either uh, curatorially or uh, your own personal work. Well, both of them are both, whether it's my work or other people's work, I'm trying to show the humanity in illness. And often I'm trying to show the positivity that comes out of illness creatively. So that's in all the shows. For me, I just want people to understand that people with disabilities, people that are in chronic pain, people with chronic conditions, they are still making art. And I think the work is a lot more compelling. What direction do you see your work going into in the future? The, the main movement right now is more curatorially. Mm -hmm. Curatorially. <laughs> um, I'm trying to work with other institutions um, the idea of getting more work in there, or if they already have a collection of work, uh, to try to use it more as educational than just something that the foundation has to, to raise money. Mm -hmm. And then I've also, you know, I have a pretty good speaking career now, or at least I did before COVID, where I would go around uh, to medical schools and medical conferences and talk about the idea of bringing art in and what it could teach people. So, you know, just like I didn't know where my art would go once I became healthy, I don't really know where this is going. I've, it's led to bringing groups of patients to medical conferences to make sure the patient story and needs are being met. Just all sorts of different things are happening as far as uh, patient advocacy and all these things because of art that I never expected would happen. Is there somewhere that everyone can go to help support or is there a way that uh, you would like people to help out if they can? If they know a hospital or somebody that would like me to come speak, that that's great. Um, they can just go to my website. Uh, I've got two. I have artandmed.com, which talks about the art and medicine stuff. Tedmeyer.com talks about just my stuff. Um, if they know, artists who do work about their illnesses. Mm -hmm. I would love to speak to them if they're people who have a good collection of work and I can fit it into a show at USC. I'd love to give them a show, um, especially if they've never shown the work before and they're good at speaking about it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time for this. Thank you so much for your interest. Yeah, of course.